they will speak on that, and I will elaborate more on that, uh, by making sure we're not sweeping things under the rug for another eight months. So our first guest uh, speaker is Dan Crane uh, for the Water Race Movement. people show up for that event. And so a little bit about, about myself, I, um, I actually grew up on a farm in Pennsylvania in a place called Bumpville, Pennsylvania. And so that's a real place. Go ahead, it's free to, uh, you're not gonna offend me if you laugh. Uh, so coming to places like Newton for me is coming, it's, it's, it's like coming home. And uh, I, there's a lot in my story, but in 2006, uh, 15 years ago, I heard a black pastor in Grand Rapids, Michigan, talk about his experience of being a black man in America and being called boy at a restaurant. And he was talking about Isaiah 58 and God's heart to loosen the chains of injustice. And in that moment, I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, says, Dan, this is what you're going to give life to. And so my wife and I, we have four kids. We live in historic South Atlanta, uh, which is just a mile south of the old race stadium, the new Georgia State Stadium. Um, we live in that community. We've been there for 10 years and we absolutely love it. And, um, and, and a year and a half ago, a year ago now, I transitioned to one race. And uh, one of the things I want to address today is uh, we follow Jesus. Uh, I don't know if everybody here follows Jesus. I don't know if everybody here is a Christian, but we, we believe in Jesus. And in John 4, Jesus says something so interesting. It says in John 4, 4, that now Jesus had to go to the Mary. And when Jesus came, he came and says, repent. Right? Why? For the kingdom of God is at hand. The good news is here. So Jesus came pronouncing that forgiveness of sins was here. The fact that Jesus had come to break down every division between people and God, between each other, between creation and within ourselves. And Jesus, really, in that moment, did anybody know the context between the Jews and the Samaritans? This was hundreds of years of divisions. The Jewish people considered the Samaritans what? Half breeds. But it says Jesus had to go through Samaria. Why does Jesus have to go through Samaria? He's breaking down racial and cultural barriers. There has been division um, in that country for a long, long time. That was set in place hundreds of years ago. So one race, um, as director of groups of mobilization, my primary thing is to do stuff like this, but then also mobilize people into and so I've actually brought some of my favorite books. I don't know if anybody saw on the table. Um, and there are a lot of my favorite books that I point to leaders of color and other people that have written really good resources. If you want to take the journey, and for us, the One Race Transformational Journey is built on three elements. It's know the story. We have to know this story. We have to know that in 1619, the first people were brought over as indentured servants. And that this system of chattel slavery lasted for 254 years until 1863 when the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. We have to know that after that, Jim Crow laws were established. And this ran into the 1960s. 
We have to understand, and as I was talking to Derek this week about what he wanted me to share, he says, Dan, I'm a numbers guy. And one of the things that Josh Clements of One Race, who I work for, breaks down the percentage of our country. That our country is 400 years old. And if we were to break down the percentages of our country, 85 to 86% of the history of our country for people of color, for African Americans and other people of color, has been one oppression. So the things that we're seeing now, and things really haven't been great for the last 50 years, right? So when we see movements like the Black Lives Matter movement and all of these other movements come up, why do they come up? They come because the past is playing out in the present. Derek referenced um, a marriage. And my wife and I have been married for 16 years. And um, a while ago, I prayed that God would give me an illustration to help the white church understand the severity of this issue. And what God gave me was that if my wife and I were married for 40 years, and for 38 of those 40 years, I abused my wife, sexually, emotionally, physically. I took everything from her. Then in year 38, I'm like, oh, this is probably wrong. I should probably stop this. Are we not going to be dealing with the first 38 years? Yes. There is trauma. We know now, if there's any counselor or psychologist here, we know that trauma passes down generation to generation to generation. And so this is why I love Derek Tee. This is why I love Power of Our Life, because he's calling people together. Why? To have the conversation, not to sweep things under the rug. We must understand there is a history that the past is always playing out in the present. And one of the main things, passions of mine, is to call the church into this place. Why? So that we can say to the world, Jesus is king. Racism and white supremacy is not. Amen? So, with my time's almost done, I'm a preacher, so I can go for a long time. You probably already know that. So I'm going to give you three things to do. One race is built on four, four pillars. Prayer. Everything we do is birthed in prayer. Authentic relationships. Um, education. You have to educate yourself. And then works of justice. I want to give you three practical tips. One, pray. Pray, 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 pray. Ephesians 6 says we don't wrestle against principalities of, the, of this world. We wrestle against the forces, the spiritual elements. So let's think about this reality. Look at the spiritual forces of racism, the demonic things behind white supremacy that has been affecting this land. Think about that. So pray, pray, pray. Educate yourself. Some of the books I brought up there are called Be the Bridge by Latasha Morrison. If you've ever read that, phenomenal place to begin. So educate yourself. Um, if, you, if you want me to give you a bunch of resources, just shoot, my, shoot me an email. Dan at OneRaceMovement.com. We put out a whole list of, of resources. Um, in March, uh, we're starting a, a class online called Reconciliation 301. We did Reconciliation 101 and 201 last year. Reconciliation 301 is going to be taken a little bit deeper. We're going to be dealing with white culture. And what does it mean to be culture and to find the culture of Jesus, the culture of the kingdom. So educate yourself. The last one is be intentional. You have to be intentional. John 4, 4, Jesus says, now I had to go to Samaria. Does anybody know the context to this, to this verse? And the normal rock for Samaria to hate Jewish people avoided Samaria. But Jesus says, no, 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 no. I'm about the new humanity. I'm about reconciliation. He goes to Samaria. So I've um, been on this journey for a while. I never really know who I'm going to meet. And all of a sudden, last year, I met this guy named Sam from Noonan. I didn't know who he was. I met him through mutual. We had lunch together. And, um, and Sam and I had been walking together for a little bit. And then last Sunday, um, Josh Clemens was preaching at a church in our neighborhood, a church of Land Lighthouse, a black church. Josh Clemens was preaching. And all of a sudden, I looked behind me, and there's this brother named Sam that had come to hear Josh. And we got to talk. And so Sam said, yeah, since George Floyd was murdered, I recognize that the black church is really hurting. And so every Sunday since then, I've been visiting a black church. Be intentional. Step outside of our normal racial and cultural elements. 
and, 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 and learn. And so um, I've actually asked Sam to pray. Um, Sam, if you could come up. And uh, one race is built on prayer. And um, I just, yeah, I, I want him to pray. I want him to pray because he is living out reconciliation here in Newton. Um, and, and pray over what reconciliation can look like in this place. Come on, brother. Oh, be glad to. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for one race, for Josh, for Hazen, and for Dan. They are making a difference. The white church needs to recognize it's been a problem for 400 years. They seem to be too complacent. Long before my time, they were accepting or complicit in slavery, and the Emancipation Proclamation did not solve that. And they were accepting or complacent of Jim Crow laws, and the Civil Rights Movement in the 60s didn't solve that. It certainly helped. We are a lot better off than we were 50 years ago or 400 years ago. There's still work to be done. The church has to take the lead because the church has Jesus Christ in our hearts. We're all made in the image and likeness of God. The black church and white church says that. We just don't seem to live it out. And we need to live it out. Lord, we need your help to do that. Just uh, give Dan strength to continue. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.